Good afternoon and welcome to The Spectrum Show, live from King Street Studios. We have a fun-packed show today for your viewing entertainment. Coming up, we will have live cookery demonstrations, a few, a few short films of our social agency members volunteering and living independently, and we have a very special guest, guest speaker. Mr. Ed Gocken. We will hear more from him a little later on. But first, we go over to Cookie Corner with Mark and Esther for dish number one. Hello, uh, you join us here in what is soon to be a practical smorgasbord of uh, culinary delights. We call it Cookery Corner. Um, we're going to, I believe it's going to be making a series of pasta dishes today. And uh, to talk us through it, we have the head chef of the whole thing, which is Esther here. So uh, we'll begin first things first with this uh, first dish. Which one? Which? What's this called? Um, vegetarian bolognese. Okay. And uh, what exactly have we got to go into uh, the, the bolognese? As it were? Well, first I have put the oil in, and I'm going to sweat the onions. Okay. So you've got the uh, the oil in there. Uh, the onions, I believe, are being chopped up over here by uh, Roger, who is your assistant. And uh, what comes next after that? Um, you put in the garlic, like after you sauté the onions for a certain amount of time, so you don't burn the garlic. Okay. Um, right, so uh, is, are they going to go in now? Let's have a look at them just going into the pan. Okay, there they go, they're going in. Right, so we've got we've got that in there. Um, what's the next ingredient? Um, garlic. Garlic. Okay. How much garlic have you got? Like two cloves. Okay. I'll just go around here to have a look at the garlic being uh, pressed up. Is there a technique you're using here? Yeah, it's the Jamie Oliver technique. Just squash them and then get the skins off. Okay. I see you're doing a very good job with that, Roger. I see we've got some corn here. Is that going to go in or is it too early for that? It's too early for that. Right. Well, I think we better go back to uh, uh, Mark and Carl. Um, and we'll come back to the, our cooking to see how it's getting on later on in the show. I'll see you then. That is starting to smell really good. Now, a lot of our group members do voluntary work. <coughs> Last week, I went over to see Richard at work for the Methodist Homes for the Aged. This is the Chatterley Centre. It offers a, a large community room and a large community kitchen. And we use it every Thursday for our extended lunch club. Is that the eyedropper? My mother's Daly. I'm the Stoke North Live at Home Scheme Manager. Um, we are office based in um, Claiborne Specialist Me Dementia Care Home in Chell. And we run um, eight groups every week and provide other services such as one-to-one -one befriending, telephone befriending because we've got such a lot of services that we provide. Yeah. They're not all in group settings. Okay. Um, we have people who do administration, we have people yeah. who come and help just for fundraising events, mm -hmm. we have people who just come and help on trips. Who does this group support? The actual groups are for anyone over 55. Ah. It could be you know, people with learning difficulties, people with mobility problems, people with sight and hearing impairments. Uh, ideally, we are trying to support people who are lonely and isolated in their own homes. Okay. That has, has not got an age to it, but the, the particular group that we are looking at are 55 plus. So Richard is one of the members of the social agency. How did you get to meet him? In Richard's case, it was a gentleman called me from Mencap and asked me if we had any placements for volunteers yeah. um, with learning difficulties, which I was more than happy to oblige. We've always got volunteering opportunities. Richard came along for a visit and to see what sort of things we do, to see if it was what he was looking for. 
and he was he was quite taken with it at the time you know he was quite yeah. interested because he's he's worked in kitchens elsewhere before yeah. um so he came along for a few weeks and just sort of helped out a little bit and observed and we then asked him if it was what he wanted and got him signed up with us and he's been a really really good volunteer because he's he's always turns up he comes to outside events that we do he never lets us down yeah. he's always there he's always willing to help wherever we want him to help and he comes on trips and helps with pushing wheelchairs and yeah. he, he gets really involved so he's been a, a really good volunteer for us my name is richard and I'm a volunteer here for MHA as a chef's assistant. I work in the kitchen, helping out with the cooking and using the industrial dishwasher and doing the tea and coffee. And I sometimes help out in the front with the um, the games or the quizzes when they want me. I help out on day trips that they do every now and then. And I take one of the ladies in their wheelchairs with Andy. How did you get involved? I had an introduction here in February last year with um, with Michaela who normally does Liz's place when Liz isn't here because mm -hmm. um, Val from Mencap got me the position here and he brought me along for the introduction and I got the job How long have you been here? I've been here since February last year so I've been here for about 11 months so it's nearly a year What do you like about working here? It's because I'm using my qualifications and, and I know what I'm doing I'm quite capable of um, okay. just doing certain things but I always get supervised when I'm using the, yeah. the oven and as well as the, the gas hob If someone was thinking about doing voluntary work what advice would you give them? I suggest they get in touch with Liz Daly or with uh, Michaela Cooper because they both sort of like run the scheme together Yeah, if anyone wants to have a voluntary position here like supporting the ladies and taking my wheelchairs on the day trips, they can just get in touch with Liz about being a volunteer. Yeah, I'm Margaret Morgan, and I'm uh, the chef at Stoke North Live at Home scheme. I do mainly the cooking. Okay. Richard is my one of my main helpers, um, so he helps me with setting tables up, yeah. um, doing the registers, um, and washing up as well. Sometimes I have to explain things a bit more yeah. detailed yeah. Uh, than normal, but no, he's um, he's brilliant, okay. very understanding, very capable. He can work without supervision, but I'm there most of the time anyway, so yeah. anything he needs help with, I'm available. I get a lot of satisfaction um, knowing that, you know, they can work as part of a team. Yeah. I think he's wonderful. What do you think is the value of groups like this that's for participants and volunteers i think i think again the biggest issue that our members have got and some of our volunteers is loneliness okay. so we we try to put in social interaction um throughout the week we have groups from monday to thursday but again it's not just members who are older people who, who get lonely younger people do people who may not be able to work yeah who are sitting at home all day and they, yeah, yeah. And they want something. So for volunteers, it's, it's, it is, I suppose, giving them the purpose every day to, to know that they've got somewhere they can go where they're going to be helping people yeah. and making a difference in their lives. Thank you for that, Richard. You know, Carl, I feel that voluntary work is important to those on the spectrum as it increases their confidence, you make new friends, and it looks fantastic on your CV. Yeah, I suppose it also gives them something to do if they really s stop for work and stuff. It gives them a little leg up, doesn't it? I quite agree with you on that, Cole. Anyway, what's coming up on the show? OK, once again, we will now hand over to Mark and Esther again in Cookery Corner for dish number two. OK, we're here back in Cookery Corner, and after that last film, our next cook needs no introduction, but I'll do it anyway. This is Richard. Hi, and uh, I can see we've got a load of mushrooms here, so um, it's, it's, it's a sauce, I believe. Yes, it's called creamy garlic mushroom sauce, and it serves for two people. Okay, and uh, how, did you start, how did you start all this? What did you do first? Well, first I chopped up some 250 grams of mushrooms in 
sli half sliced and, and I've added some oil into this pan and just added the mushrooms in and I've just got to sweat it a little bit and make it make the taste come out a bit more and a bit later when I've chopped off a bit more of this garlic I'm going to add it in to this to make make it flavour. Okay so you started off um, by doing all that and uh, since we've been on air you've been chopping this garlic yes, is that right? Yeah. Well I'll chop a few more to make it um, make little more squares out of it and then when I've added that in I add a bit of a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper to season the taste and then a bit later add uh, some double cream to it to make it make it taste nice and then add a squeeze of lemon to it to help it to flavor and then a bit later add some parsley for for um, garnish well, my mouth's just watering just thinking about it. Um, okay, well, we'll leave you in uh, suspense for a while while we see how that turns out. You'll find out later on in the show, um, as will we all, as will everybody. Um, and uh, we've still got two more meals to, to go, and that will come up later in the show. Um, in the meantime, back to you and Carl. Thank you very much, us, Mike and us. I'm sure that looks delicious. And now we have a very special guest. You might know him as Baron von Greenback in the recent remake of Danger Mouse. But to us here at the social agency, we know him as Saul's very good friend, Ed. Ed. Hello, lads. Nice to be here. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. And could you tell us a little bit about what you do sure. in your line of work? Yeah. Uh, I'm a writer and performer, mostly in comedy. Uh, and I direct as well, direct a lot of stand-up comedians and live shows uh, and I've made films and I'm, as an actor I've worked on television uh, with my face uh, and body <laughs> but also with my voice in a lot of things. I've done a lot of cartoons like Danger Mouse <laughs> and a lot of radio as well. So. Now would you say that was a bit like a testing job to do sort of directing stand-up comedians and voice acting and no I, I think I'm, sort of I think I'm very lucky actually Carl I, uh, I think it's it anyone who gets to sort of dress up and pretend and play for a living is very lucky when you, <laughs> when you see actors on things and they yeah. go oh my god it was awful you know, we made a film about World War One and it was just like being in World War One I think sure. they, they need to go and get a proper job for a bit really, well so. I would imagine so, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I feel it, very lucky it mate, doesn't so. exactly uh, the highlight of the hour <laughs> <laughs> no so uh, yeah no it's lovely I'm very very lucky now, we know you better, of course, as Baron Von Greenback in Danger Mouse. Thank you, Mark. But before you did Danger Mouse, yeah. did you lend your, your vocal talents to any other animations or radio programmes? I did, yeah. I've done a lot of radio, uh, a lot of stuff on BBC Radio 4 and also on Radio 3 as well. Okay. Uh, and then my first big animation job was a job called Cupid 5, which okay. was on CBBC, so the same channel as Danger Mouse. Uh, which is a really nice show. We did a hundred and I think we did a hundred and four of those and a oh, Christmas special. So we did, one. yeah, we did a lot of them. That was really great. And I've done some animated films, uh, a couple of animated feature films, and uh, a lot of what they call ADR, which is additional dialogue recording for things. Yeah. So. Okay. Now is that sort of a difficult thing to do in like finding places and that give that good amount of reverb as people know it as it yeah is. i think definitely studios make a lot of difference and that you know the uh, uh, i work mostly in london there's a lot of really good studios in london with purpose built mm. sound rooms yeah. that are purposely built for mm. voice recording as opposed to music recording or something else yeah okay now we knew you better as date and bound being back on danger Mouse, but could you tell us a bit about how you do the voice recording Sure. So on Danger Mouse, for instance, we do it more like you would a radio play. On okay. some animation jobs, you're on your own yeah. in a studio and it's just you. And you're generally behind glass, you know, okay. with a microphone with a pop shield on it to stop you yeah. spitting on it. Yeah. And you've got headphones on so you can hear the director yeah. and the, sometimes the writers and producers. Okay. Uh, but in Danger Mouse, we do it like a radio play. So there's four of us normally. It's myself. Alexander Armstrong, who plays Danger Mouse, okay. Kev Eldon, who plays Penfold, yeah. and Dave Lamb, who's the narrator, who does Come Down With Me, he's the narrator yeah. on that. Oh. So we have the four of us in a, in a room together, 
Uh, so it's, it's loads of fun, and you get a much more live feel between the performers then. So. Now, you mentioned Alexander Armstrong. Yeah. Have you ever worked with his psychic on the Richard, point? I haven't. You know, Richard is in uh, Danger Mouse, but I've never worked with Richard right, in okay. Danger Mouse. But um, he did, yeah, he did his another another day I wasn't in, but he's very good. He's very and yeah. th and they're great together. I think. Yeah, they they're known as the pointless duo. They the are, army. yeah. And Alexander Armstrong's great. I mean, he's brilliant as Danger Mouse, and, and so is Kev. Kev Alden, who plays Penfold, is brilliant. Yeah. You know, yeah. and Kev's done all sorts of brilliant stuff. He was in Big Train, and he's in all those Shaun of the Dead, and you know those sort of mm. films, Simon Pegg films and stuff. So Chris okay. Morris things. So yeah. Okay, for those uh, view viewers who are watching our show. If they, were, if they want to go into your line of work, what advice can you offer any prospective voiceover artists? Um, I think it's like a lot of things, really. You, have, you know, you have to practice, so practice your voices. And now that we've all got iPhones and tablets and mm. uh, things, it's very easy to make your own recording. So I think yeah. recording yourself and listening back to it mm. gives you a much better perspective on, on you know, what the voices really sound like to someone, mm. you know. And I would say, um, if you've got friends that are, that are interested in it, then do recordings together and send them to each other, and mm. you know that really helps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a lot of good stuff on. There's a lot of beside, you know, behind the scenes things on YouTube and stuff. Now we've done a few for Danger Mouse, and there's mm. Simpsons ones and all sorts of stuff. So you can kind of see how it works a bit as well, which yeah. is probably good. So, do you ever record yourself? before you go to a show? I do sometimes, yeah. If I'm doing a new job, if it's a character <coughs> I haven't done before, then yeah, I'll record it on my iPhone and have a listen back to it and go... Because mm. you sort of... When you're doing cartoons especially, if you're playing a lot of different characters, like I do in Danger Mouse, you want yeah. them to sound as Perfect. different from each other as possible. Yes. Yeah, so you have to okay. listen back to yourself and go, oh, hang on, am I slightly repeating that or, you know... Yeah, okay. One last question. Mm -hmm. If you could voice for a film or TV program, which would you choose? Well, it's difficult, that. I think uh, we've got a, a segment coming up later this afternoon that I'm very excited about. We've got Adam, who's uh, one of the Spectrum Show regulars, who's a brilliant uh, yeah. actor and voice actor. So I'm going to be doing a bit of live uh, voiceover with Adam. Uh, I'm going to be playing a werewolf as opposed to an evil toad. <laughs> I should watch the world, Danger Mouse. I'm not playing a toad today. It's in my contract. This will not happen. Okay, I'll do it. Give me five pounds. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to be playing an evil werewolf, and Adam will be playing uh, the sheriff of Tombstone, Arizona, and mm. his girlfriend. So it'll be a, it'll be a, oh, a, a, a fun thing, I think. <laughs> There's okay. Adam there. I'm sure that you do a lot of this line of work when you're not here uh -huh. or visiting sure. any of your friends yeah. I'm sure you're very busy at work is that the case most of the time or? yeah generally we're always doing you know writing or directing or doing voiceovers or you know being in a show or yeah there's always um, stuff I'm on. sorry to interrupt we not at all Mark. running rather short on ah, time very good okay thank you very much for coming and taking up your very precious time and extremely works extremely busy week scheduled to come and chat with us today. Well, thank you for having me on your extremely busy show. I'm honoured to be here. Thanks a lot, it's lads. It's our pleasure. Thank okay. you, Okay, we'll see Ed and Adam a little later on. But for now, we will hand over to Mike once again and Esther in Cookie Corner to see how it's going. Okay, we're back in uh, Cooking Corner and uh, we're on to meal number three now. Uh, can you just... Uh, uh, we, 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 uh, we're just coming in very busy moments. You're trying to open a can of something. What's, what's how are you opening there? I'm just opening a can of tomatoes. Okay. Well, so tomatoes is one of the ingredients. And uh, in what, what's this you've got in the pan here? Um, I've got uh, garlics in there. And I'm just about to add the um, tomatoes into the, with the garlic. Into the pan. Okay. And I believe that the whole thing will be a tuna dish, will it? Yes, it certainly will. Okay, so the tomatoes in there. Which one's going in next? Is it this or that? Uh, I'm going to put the olives in and then the tuna. Okay, let's see the olives go in. These are olives that you chopped earlier? Yes, they certainly are. They don't have to have it. Well, I'm sure there'll be no shortage of those people. Who, uh, who are just queuing up. In fact, 
I think Ed might ha might try some at the end of the show. Okay. That seems to be going along nicely. Let's hand back over to Mark and Carl for the rest of the show. Thanks once again, Mike and Asti. That, that show looks tasty. At our regular social, or at our regular group meetings, we like to put the emphasis on being independent and talking about issues arising from that. Over the past year, a few of our members have moved into their own accommodation. Recently, Saul went to speak to Mike, one of our members, who has recently moved to find, is recently moved into his flat to find out about the advantages or some challenges of living independently. Over to you, Saul. Oh, hello. Uh, this is my flat. Let's come in and have a look around. I've been here since May last year. Uh, so about eight or nine months. It's, it's been really nice. I mean, uh, being on your own, there are times where um, you wish you had s someone else around just to... Uh, sometimes, it, you know, it's a bit too quiet and or sometimes it's not quiet enough. I mean, there's a garage next door that makes a lot of noise. But um, generally, uh, it, it's it's there's a lot of benefits to having your own place. This is the uh, bathroom. Um, it's quite small, but it's all right for what I need. Another little note over here: uh, don't wash your hair after eight ten on a work day. Now I know what you're thinking. You put that there out of experience, and you'd be right. Um, so I won't be making that mistake again. I, I'm not really in, in a sort of note. I wouldn't re normally stick up notes at all, but it, it came out of just such frustration of getting things wrong all the time. Um, uh, uh, something bad had to happen quite a lot before a note comes up because it's like the last straw sort of thing so a note comes up so that I don't have to do that again. I thought until recently that my mind was empty but I think it's rather the opposite it's too full of stuff. I think about things all the time but it's not it's, it's not relevant things um, so it's you know uh, you know, idea, ideas for stories, obviously they're rattling around in there and half-remembered bits of songs or TV shows and things that, you know, and in, in amongst that, fighting for space is important stuff, like, you know, remembering to do this, that and the other. And um, the important things don't often float to the, to the top, really. So I thought thought the notes might work uh, and hope and they do sometimes. This is the bedroom. Not quite as much room for books as I need. I need some sort of other bookshelf to put stuff and it's sort of going everywhere. This is the TARDIS I made for the um, parade. I'm trying to learn the guitar this year. Um, this is an old guitar that I've um, that, that I'm able to use. Some of my uh, writing archives in there. Um, it's split. This it's quite a sizable archive. Being a writer, I've kept nearly well, not I don't know if it's everything I've ever written, but lots of it. So there's some of it is in here, and some of it will be in the other room. And uh, I started writing when I was about nine. So there's about 20 years of it at this point, so that's um, some of it in there. It's something I'd, I'd recommend. Um, it's not, I wouldn't say it's as scary as they might think it is. Even though you may get things wrong, you've got more time to do that in. And it's a sort of, it's, it's a safe space. I mean, as autistic people, we, we sort of, uh, value these spaces we make for ourselves and 
um, it's the places where we're most comfortable. So if you think about all the times that you've gone to your room and you've felt safe and secure and you've got away from whatever's stressing you out, having your own place is is a multiplication of that. It's just it expanded to a whole place. And just have people around you that can support you and um, not always do not always do absolutely everything for you, but just steer you in the right direction and just when they give you advice, just take it on board, really. Thank you, Mike. I'm sure that's offered some very helpful advice for those of our viewers who wish to move into their own flat. Over to you, Carl. Okay, once again, let's catch up with Esther and Mike in Cookery Corner. For dish number four. Mike. What a handsome young man in that of you. Okay, we're here in, a, we're here in a Cookery Corner, and I'm being overwhelmed by all the, uh, the aromas coming from the these three simultaneous dishes we've got here, but I'm going to have to drag myself away from them because uh, uh, to come over to the last meal. And I've been told it's a very, uh, it's a very um, simple one to do if you've been worried about some of the ones so far, whether you'll get to grips with them. This is uh, a very... As you can tell, this is a live programme, although it nearly, very nearly wasn't. Um, okay, let's... Let's end things on a bang. Okay. <laughs> uh, Becky, uh, would, what, what's this we're doing here? Um, continue. Just been um, chopping up some um, garlic and um, pepper. So it's... Uh, um, oh, hang on. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so garlic and, uh, garlic and pepper. Yeah. Uh, any other ingredients you're going to put into it? Um, yeah, oil and um, a bit of parsley and salt and pepper. Okay, well, let's get them into the pan, then. Uh, which one are you going for first? Um, the, the garlic. Okay. It Does it matter? <laughs> let's go for one of them. Okay, so we've got some oil going in there. So that's one, two, three, about four teaspoons. Oh, that's not a teaspoon, what am I on about? Uh, yes, okay, so four spoons of that. And then in goes the garlic, the garlic first. Uh, and uh, now I'm just going to mix it. And then after I've mixed it, I'm going to put the pep pepper in. Okay, well, we'll leave it there for the moment and uh, we'll come back one final time so that Ed could do some tasting of these. And uh, I'm, I personally can't wait because they all look very nice and delicious. Okay, back to you. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, that looks like the sauce for me. It's so simple to do. Now, this morning, Adam, one of our longest serving members of the social agency, is a keen actor. And would, and would love to get into the world of voice work. As a special treat, he spent some time this morning with Ed to prepare voices for a small clip. And now for your viewing pleasure, Adam and Ed will now engage in an epic voice-off. So please sit back and enjoy the following clip. Hey, for Wally. Why, hey there, how are you doing today? So, you've been very good today, have you? Oh, no, absolutely not. I didn't even get my star at all. Well, unfortunately, I got my star and also gained psychic powers as well <gasps> to see the big giant monster that was right behind me. So then, are you able to see what is on his teeth? Yeah, oh, absolutely not. So then, I'm oh. starving. I want some chips. Listen to me. You've got to stay with me right now. So, so open your mouth, give me your marshmallows and kiss me. But he's got a few dollars. I'll have them off this shelf. Right. Well, let me see what's inside. Not half. Oh. Oh. Right, oh, I'm having it. Nice oh, that. <laughs> give me your money. I want chicken McNuggets. I can't get off. I'm a werewolf. I want chicken McNuggets for my teeth. I can't get a haircut. I'm a werewolf. It's part of the gig. 
no, 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 if, if I do that, I'm not a werewolf anymore. No, you asked Lon Chaney. Look, I'm going. Sorry about that. I'll just get carried away. Will the marshal ever recover? Will he marry Beryl behind the stockade? Who was the mysterious werewolf? Join us next week on The Spectrum Show. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Well done, mate. It was great. Thank you so much. No, I'm, sh I'm sure everyone enjoyed that. I certainly did. <laughs> I'll just gather myself for a moment. Right. Finally. We will now go over to Cookery Corner with Mark and Esther and Ed, who just walked off. <laughs> Can we ask you to go over and test out the sauces? Yes! <laughs> oh, okay, we're back in the Cookery Corner and as if by magic, Ed has yeah, suddenly been beside me. Well, uh, okay, uh, so we've got the first dish here in front of us. It's, it's looking very appetising, perhaps you'd like to dig in. Okay. Tensions mounting. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. Really good. Yeah, really good. And you can quote him on that. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Well done, Becky. Let's go to the next dish here. This is the uh, tuna dish, the tuna and olive. What do you make of that? Yeah, that's really nice, Mike. You can taste the tuna and the olive very balanced in that. It's great. Good to have a balance, mm. yes. Yeah. Uh, balance is important. Okay, let's move along to the uh, third dish here. Smashing. I bet Ed can't believe his luck. He's getting all mm. these meals for free. <laughs> free food, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's lovely, that, nice and creamy, yeah, like that. Yeah. Very good, very good. And finally, we've got uh, the vegetarian bolognese. Let's see what you think of this. Mm, yep, also very good, Mike. Yeah, it's very, very hard to pick a winner. Well, it, it is very hard to pick a winner, but uh, I'm afraid the format of the show takes that we do have to pick <laughs> a winner. Pick yes, a winner. we do have to pick a winner. In that case, just as in rehearsal, I'm going to have to go with the tuna one. Ah. Tuna and olive, I think, is the winner for me. So it was rigged? No. <laughs> yes, it's, 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 yes. Tuna. I told you, give me five pounds and you win! Okay. <laughs> so, uh, tuna is the winner, again. Well done for a second time in a row, Nikki. Three. So, yes. A very successful end to the show, which is a much needed relief. Um, so, uh, all that remains for me is to say um, back over to Carl and Mark to wrap up the show. Thank you very much, Mike. Well, that's all we have time for now today. I just want to say a very special thank you to Ed for gracing us with his presence and a very big thank you to Mike and Asa in Kukri, Kukri Corner. And finally, from myself, Mark and the team, can we say a massive thanks to Pete and Russell at the King Street Studios for supporting the show and to Be Arts for the loan of the cooking equipment. We couldn't do it without you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much for watching, watching and, and goodbye. goodbye.